silicone versus saline breast implants. Let's break it down. So both a silicone implant and a saline implant, this is silicone, this is saline, both of them have a silicone shell. So even this saline implant here, the outer shell that holds the salt water or saline inside the balloon is silicone. So the part of the implant that interfaces with your body is still silicone. It's just that the filling of the implant is saline, which is salt water, and not silicone gel. A silicone implant, on the other hand, has a silicone shell, and it is filled with a silicone gel. So the advantage of the silicone implants is that they feel more natural and they ripple less. Saline implants, this has air in it for effect. We don't fill them with air, but if you did have air in it, it would slowly get absorbed in your body. You'd breathe it out, so it's not a big deal. But when we fill them with salt water, these saline implants, they, um, by virtue of being filled with salt water, they do ripple more than silicone implants and they feel less natural, so they're just not as soft. Um, so that's really the difference between saline and silicone implants. If the saline implant ruptures, which is where the shell cracks, and that happens in silicone implants at a rate of 1% per year. If this ruptures, that means that the saline implant is just, the saline's just gonna leak out, your body will absorb it, you'll pee it out, and you'll kinda have a flat tire. If the silicone implants rupture, modern silicone implants are fairly cohesive, meaning that gel inside is kinda like a gummy bear. So the gel might leak out, it might not, it's very, it's much more solid than the old implants. The gel's less runny. So if it does leak out and you have a rupture, you probably won't even know. Um, and if that bothers you, you can get a saline implant because you will know if a saline implant ruptures. If you want to know if your silicone implant is ruptured, you should get an MRI. That's basically how we test to see if a silicone implant is ruptured. Most of the time, people who come in with a concern for a silicone implant rupture, they have a reason to get surgery anyways. They need a lift, they want different implants, there's something else going on, and so we just go to the operating room and replace the implants anyways, and we skip the expensive MRI. But that's really it. So saline versus silicone, I'm not gonna say one's better than another because I'm gonna get a bunch of hate mail, but all I'll say is they both have a silicone shell, but the inside of a saline implant is filled with water, the inside of a silicone implant is filled with silicone gel, and that is the major difference. I should also mention this is another type of silicone implant. This is a shaped silicone implant. This is a smooth, round silicone implant. So both of these implants have a silicone shell and are filled with silicone gel. The shaped implant has a more natural breast shape. And because of that, it has to be textured. This smooth round silicone implant, if it rotates, meaning it spins around like this, it doesn't matter because it's round. This cannot rotate because it'll take on a funny shape because it is meant to be shaped like a breast. It has an upside and a downside and a front and a back, and it's different. So it cannot, it is not made to rotate like this in the body. And to keep it from rotating, it has to be textured. And so that's why all shaped implants are textured. Not all round implants are textured because round implants don't have to be textured. There are textured round implants available, and I'm not gonna get into when or why you would use those, but round implants do not need to be textured because if they rotate, it doesn't matter. To learn more, check out our website where you can upload your photos and concerns as a virtual consult. You can also check out our price estimator to get pricing information for all the various procedures we offer. And finally, if you'd like to have your questions answered on a future podcast or Q&A video session like this, please leave a message on our SpeakPipe. You can go to our blog page and our SpeakPipe is located there. Thanks for listening.